everybody. This is Rachel Bale. I'm the executive editor of Animals for National Geographic. And today we are going to be talking with Dr. Rodrigo Medellin, who's been studying bats for several decades. We're going to talk about bats and humans and their connection to disease. So let me go ahead and get him on the line with us. Just a moment. And here we go. There he is. So we're waiting while we're waiting for, oh, there is, there he is. Hey. Hello, Rodrigo. Thank How you are you, for Rachel? Joining us. Thank you for inviting me. It's wonderful to see you here. And thank you, everyone, for joining in. So um, here we are with Dr. Rodrigo Medellin. He's a National Geographic explorer and a bat expert. Um, so, Rodrigo, why don't we start with some bat myths? Um, bats don't always have the best reputation. Um, one of the first is people often associate bats and Dracula. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Rachel, bats are probably the most unfairly treated animals on Earth. There's many animals that have a bad reputation, as you know, from spiders to snakes to scorpions to sharks to bats. None of those animals have a, a, a good image in front of people, but the one that has the most unfair uh, bad reputation are bats because we get so many benefits from them. So, for example, you started uh, talking about, about Dracula, right? Well, Dracula was exactly the beginning of the decline of the positive image of, uh, of bats around the world. Before that, bats had a very, very good reputation everywhere in the world. You know that the Maya had a very, very good image and very good context for bats. And if you go to the Maya temples, you are going to find um, uh, icons and uh, pottery and presence of bats all over the place in a very good context. So unfortunately, it's Dracula the moment when the, the, the image starts coming down. That's really interesting. So what about... Um the phrase acting batty. Where does that come from? And do bats deserve that reputation? The what, sorry? Acting batty, or when people say somebody is, you know, bat crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, unfortunately, again, this is, there's a number of things that have absolutely zero explanation from bats in the belfry and acting batty as blind as a bat. None of those had any root in reality. Bats are not blind. Bats are not crazy, bats are not filthy, bats are your friends and my friends. Bats are actually pretty smart, aren't they? Uh, they're incredibly smart, and not only that, they are uh, incredibly present in your life and in my life. Every day of your life is touched by a benefit that bats provided for us. For example, your coffee this morning. You have bats there because bats are the best pest controllers of any, uh, any, any insect that may affect from corn to coffee to cotton to rice and many, many other crops. And of course, we are going to find if you wear anything of cotton, you are connected to bats. If you ate any nachos today, well, you are connected to bats. You're eating rice, connection to bats everywhere. We have connections in the positive sense with bats. So what exactly do bats do to make all of these important ecosystem services happen? Uh, there is uh, over 1,400 uh, species of bats in the world. And of those 1,400, they are all, they all exist in all of the ecosystems between the poles. It's only in the polar circles that they're not there. What do they do? One out of every four bats are insectivorous bats. And let me explain with, a, with an example. If we take just the northern fringe of Mexico from Sonora to Tamaulipas, the northern bordering states of Mexico, we have calculated that we have about 
20 million bats of one species. Mexico has 140 species. We're talking about one, one species that we've been studying for 20 years. Each million of these bats destroys 10 tons of insects every night, every night. So just do the math. And you're going to see that if we lose those bats in a few months, we wouldn't have any crops, right? Uh, so that is the first benefit that we get. All of these uh, uh, pests are being controlled, agricultural pests and insect pests, mosquitoes, etc., are being controlled by bats. Then there's a very significant amount, about 200 species that are insect, e uh, sorry, that fruit eaters. They eat fruit. When they eat fruit, they disperse the seeds of these fruits in the forest, in the protected areas, in the disturbed areas, in areas that were forests and are now cleared. So we have two benefits from there. One is the recovery of the forest itself because of the uh, seeds that the bats have been dispersing. And the other is the incredible variety of fruits, of tropical fruits that we humans get because bats have been dispersing the seeds of those things. Think of guavas, think, think of mangoes, Think of figs and many other fruits that we have because of that. And then the that's last, what, sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's also pollinators, right? Exactly. That's the last one. The last benefit that we get from them, from them, and by no means the smallest one, is pollination. Uh, you can think, for example, in the Maya world again. Uh, the Mayas have this incredibly majestic tree called the Seiba tree. The Seiba tree is pantropical. It, it, it lives all over the tropics, all around the world, and it is bat pollinated. So the, 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 sac the sacred Seiba tree is one in which the underground is connected to the sky, to heaven, because of the extensive roots of the Seiba, and then the huge column, the huge trunk of the tree, and then the canopy, right? So it's your soul when you die, you climb up a Seiba tree and you get to heaven. Guess what? Save us are pollinated by bats. And I invite everyone who is watching us today from anywhere in the tropics. This is the save uh, flowering season. So keep your safe distance. Go out at night. Go. that these bats are really providing us with that. If that was not enough, what am I going to say as a Mexican? Because we have tequila and mezcal because of bats. Exactly. Bats are the perfect pollinators of agave plants or century plants. And it's not only tequila and mezcal that we get, the sisal that we get, the fiber that we get, it's, it's, it's huge in, in the developing world. I just came back from Kenya, and in Kenya there's huge plantations of sisal, which is bat pollinated. So we have so many benefits from the bats, and we at least should be aware of them and thank the bats for them. Very good question. There is actually 40 different coronaviruses in the world that have been found so far. Coronavirus is a family of viruses. From those 40, they have been found in chickens, in other birds, in bats, in camels, in, in pigs, in primates, in many other mammals. But from those 40, 33, 33 are absolutely harmless to human beings. Nothing happens to a human being if you get any of those 33. From the remaining seven, four may give you a cold, a common cold, a little stronger than a common cold. And only three, only three, um, are the ones that may ha may affect your health, like SARS coronavirus in 2003, MERS coronavirus of 10 years ago, and today 
the SARS-CoV-2 uh, that people say that is coming from bats, but there is absolutely no evidence. So yes, there are some coronaviruses that have been found in bats that are completely innocuous to humans. Neither the SARS coronavirus the original, nor the MERS coronavirus, nor the SARS-CoV-2 has been found in bats. Okay, so the question is, why do I think that people believe that uh, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is coming from bats? Unfortunately, there's uh, quite a few media out there that have been putting out this claim that the bats are... uh, that the bats are the careers of this of this virus. There is absolutely zero evidence to demonstrate that the first patient was infected by a bat and nobody has found the SARS-CoV-2 virus in a bat. That said, yes, there are other coronaviruses in bats that are completely innocuous or completely, they're not, they don't do anything to us. So the reason why is there's a number of... Uh, of scientists out there who have been saying, oh, it's very closely related to the virus that we have, but that closely related doesn't mean it's the same. And in fact, if I can expand a little bit there, uh, the, the bat virus, the bat virus that is called SLCOV, SLCOV, which is the bat virus that is 96% similar to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, cannot get into the, our, our cells and infect us because the protein that serves as a key, like a keyhole to enter our cells is not compatible with the human cell membrane. That means that if, even if you get the virus from a bat and you put it on yourself, that virus will not be able to infect you. So bats are completely free from this. There must have been some intermediate step between that virus, maybe that virus in the bats to another species of animal, may have been a civet, may have been a pangolin, who knows, and then to a human. Now, that doesn't mean that the bats or the civets or the pangolin are to blame. None of those animals are to blame. Okay, uh, everyone out there, we are having some technical issues with uh, Rachel's audio. So I am going to uh, repeat the questions as Rachel tells them to me. Excellent question, Rachel. Excellent question. So the question is whether people should be concerned to of getting uh, the, this new coronavirus from bats. There is absolutely zero probabilities, zero probabilities that anybody in the world is going to get this SARS-CoV-2 from a bat. Zero. For the first, for the reason that I said a minute ago, and second, because of the 1.7 million people who have unfortunately been infected with the virus, every last one of them has been infected by a human, by a human. Maybe the first one, the very first one, was infected by an animal. We don't know which animal that was. And until until the, uh, the scientists find out what that animal was, the question is open. But not only that. Not only that, why is this fixation, this obsession of human beings of finding who gave us coronavirus? Don't look anywhere. Look in the mirror. It's us. We gave coronavirus to ourselves.
sir. Uh, the, the question is whether I am concerned uh, about people retaliating against bats with this, uh, with this situation that is out in the media. Unfortunately, Rachel, that concern is already a reality. There's many places in the world, from Indonesia to Peru to Cuba to Rwanda, uh, in which, and many other places, that are already killing bats, if you can believe it, for fear that they can pass the uh, SARS-CoV-2 to, to humans. There is absolutely zero reason. Oops. Am I, out? Am I offline? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's strange. Strange. Well, what can people do to help bats? What is happening here? I don't know what happened. Um, what can people do to help bats? That's a very important question. And you can do 